Alright, so that's me. Not that guy, not 29, 27. Come on. <laughs> Man, do you hear what that nigga did? He beat up my friend. And, blah, blah, blah. and 
Man, we gotta go back and get that again. It's white dudes. And this is my dad. Excuse me? Uh, 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 Eric, Eric, did you hear about, uh, 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 yeah, there was a fight last night. I said, yes. Yeah. So I go, get my backpack again. My backpack, I walked out. Walked to find you, student leader. My student leader in the residence halls is the RA. I go to the RA, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm here at Davis, I live in 4B. Um, this thing just happened right now. Uh, 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 um, uh, well, well, maybe you should go see uh, my hall director. Maybe you should go see my boss. Maybe you, should, you should go see my boss. Her room is up. You know where her room is, right by the, you know, kind of, you, you know where it is, right? Know 
why you are unique and why you are unique, folks up there. Y'all up there with me? I got this light so y'all are in a big haze. And if I take my glasses off, you completely disappear. But hey, I'm glad I got on our trip on the stage. Be yourself. Think critically. I see some faces of people who have been in my classes. Right? And on the first day, start, start something big. On the first day of class, this is what I tell my students. I said, I am not cool with Waterboy answers. Y'all know what the Waterboy is? The movie? Y'all remember that movie? Yeah. What's that say? If, you, if I ask you what you feel about gay marriage and the initiative and the changing climate, and you said, well, my mama said, Okay. What do you think? In my classes and on campus, uh, uh, our communities as educational institutions want you to think for yourself. Be you, think for you. Take risks, but you got to think about. Can I just divert for a minute? Can I just can I talk to y'all for a minute? Yeah. We talk about you're ready to go bomb Syria or something, right? Have we already done it? We in Afghanistan, and I'm not, I'm not conservative or liberal or any of that stuff, man. I'm not trying to get into politics here. I'm just saying some things just don't make sense. Now, when I, I was watching the towers go down, and I remember people saying, oh, well, you know, it's those Islamic extremists. We can't be like that, man. We've got to think for ourselves, because Jeff, Timothy McVeck was the first terrorist on that U.S. soil. Yep. So we're going to be in fear of anybody. It should be white Christian males, apparently. <laughs> but Michael Fronty, y'all ever heard of Spearhead? Michael Fronty? Yep. Michael Fronty has a song called Hello Bonjour. And on the first day of class, I always do it. Let me get a little water because I'm going to do it for y'all. Let me get a little water. There's a song called Hello Bonjour, which talks about religious intolerance and how we need to just let people be. And however they work. I just gave you the quote from Common as a precursor. Common says in gaining one's definition, G that period O period D, he says, um, you know, whoever's got you doing right and got you this far, whether you say in Jesus' name or Wangu Allah, as long as you know there's a being that's supreme to you, you should let that show towards others and the things you do. Now, whatever your religious tradition, or if you don't practice a religious tradition, whatever you emit is what people are going to say about you, and they're going to see. So if you want to be that, be that, emit it. Shine. Let it shine through you. But folks, Hello Bonjour talks about how we just don't think. And we let people in the so-called leadership, our you know, administrations and our, our, our politicians, they lead us. I don't need a passport to walk on this earth anywhere I go because I was made of this earth. I'm born of this earth, I breathe of this earth, and even through the pain, I believe in this earth. So I wake up every morning and I'm stepping on the floor. I wake up every morning and I'm stepping out the door. I got faith in the sky, faith in the one, faith in the people rocking underneath the sun. Because every bit of land is a holy land, and every drop of water is a holy water, and every single child is the son or the daughter of the one earth, mama and the one earth, papa. So don't tell a man that he can't come here because he's got brown eyes and a wavy kind of hair, and don't tell a woman that she can't go there because she prays a little different to her God up there. You say you're a Christian because God made you. You say you're a Muslim because God made you. You say you're a Hindu and the next man's a Jew, but we all kill each other because God told us to.
And, and later on, I'm doing a 3.30 session. So some of you haven't been to that session. Hopefully, you're going to come check me out. And it's talking about the multicultural issue. And that's also part of it. Part of being multicultural in today's world is knowing thyself. Know thyself. Cultural competency and self-awareness. You need self-awareness to participate. If you are part of a, if you, if I say, what is your cultural background? And you say, uh, I'm just this, I'm just that. See, you're undercutting who you really are. I'm more than just my ethnicity. I'm more than just my gender and orientation. I'm all of those things. Let me, let me ask you all Anybody ever been to, um, like, a... New York City, I go travel a lot. Anybody ever been out east? All right, so I go out east, right? And I'm trying to just get some water, because you know, you talk, you get thirsty. And I'm saying, where can I get some of the drink? I'm in Boston. Boston, she said. Boston. And he said, I said, he said, uh, oh, yeah, 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 the bubble up's over there. Oh, uh, the bubble up. <laughs> What's a bubble up? You mean water faucet. See, everywhere we go, our culture has its distinct flavor to it here in the Northwest, and in other places they have a distinct culture as well. Any, anybody ever been down to Atlanta? Yeah. 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 I go down to Atlanta for a conference, and after the conference on race and ethnicity, I go get in line and get something to drink and something to eat. I, I'm all confused. Because I'm, I'm from Illinois, so when you want something to drink, you just say pop. I moved to LA, it's so. In Atlanta, it's cold. <laughs> so I'm in line trying to get something to eat. I'm thinking this is a simple endeavor. I'm just hungry. I'm going to get something to eat, y'all. And they're like, uh, I hear the person in the front of the order. Uh, yeah, I'd like to have number two with an orange coat. <laughs> <laughs> that you can pick whatever you want. I said, okay. I got one of my kids with me, you know, they tug it on me, but Daddy, I don't want orange coat. I don't want orange coat. <laughs> so, next person orders. Yeah, I'll take a number one and I'll take a clear coat. Cultural lesson for y'all to set up. Actually be Sprite, right? <laughs> and then you in Atlanta. So just another little cue, because I like Pepsi. If you like Pepsi in Atlanta, because Coke is based in Atlanta, you're going to get put on the next Delta flight out. <laughs> Just get out of it. It's like talking against, it's like speaking against uh, Starbucks living in this area. But you can say it, you're wrong. But you better not, too loud. Because they got like, they got, you ever know seen that? They got corners everywhere. I'm a fan of The Wire. Y'all watch The Wire? Yeah. You know, they're like corner boys. Starbucks here, Starbucks there. <laughs> I don't know about the water, so you don't even get me. That's all right, though. But here's the point. On the plane right back, man, I'm sitting on the plane, and there's this woman in front of me, after, after we get off the plane, I should say, we're standing a lot on the layover, and she is jittery. She ain't having her caffeine for the morning. You know how we are when we ain't had our. So I knew where she was from. I said, hey, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Seattle. <laughs> Here's a good example. 
my friend and I, we used to work in residence hall, so I came, came an RA and went from student leadership where y'all were sitting. I became a hall director at Seattle U. I had this other partner who was a Seattle U person as well, and he and I were having a hard time making connections. He was another hall director. And it took us, the funniest thing connected us. It was talking about basements. Yeah, we were both from the Midwest, and we both were talking about basements. Now, I think these out here are from the Midwest. Anybody from the Midwest know what's up? Woo! So we know what's up. So in the basement, what the thing is, in the 70s in, in basements, dads got kicked down to the basement. Yep. <laughs> That's where dads belong. And all of their stuff got kicked to the basement, too. So anytime my dad had his little statue collections, my mom's like, oh, you can't keep that up here. You got to put that down to the basement. <laughs> So my buddy Rob was talking about his dad's beer stein collection. You know, the German thing, the beer stein collection. And he said, his, when he came back to the table laughing because his mom told dad that the beer stein collection had to go down to the basement. I started laughing because my mom had just called my dad and told him, I had talked to my mom and she had told my dad that the African mask collection had to go down to the basement. <laughs> Along with the dashikis, the statues, and all the things that were freaking us out as kids. <laughs> Now, we started comparing notes on basements, right? He, I said, Rob, what's your dad's basement? He said, man, I got a little, he's got a little stereo, you know, and then you go, and there's you know, a nice little seating area. It's bright and cheery. I said, what y'all listen to? He said, Sinatra, you know, we listen to Elvis, Pat Sinclair. I said, oh, okay. On the walls, he said there was some mirrored glass. You know, etched like Coca-Cola, like a soda shop, right? He said, well, but well, Eric, what about your dad's basement, right? I said, man, my dad's a jazz musician. Y'all know anything about jazz musicians? No. <laughs> I didn't get it back then, but I just knew he was cool. <laughs> and so, jazz musician, man, my dad's basement, first of all, it was an adventure to go into my dad's basement. <laughs> you would go in, and you know, you go downstairs. We get in trouble on purpose. He's saying, we go downstairs, you gotta go through the bees. <laughs> it was never bright and cheery. It was always dark. Lava lamps, etc. And, and then the smell of smoky incense would hit me. Now, mind you that this incense was the kind that made you want to have some brownies with a little sprinkle of Fritos. <laughs> Some people 
why I realize, and you all are going to be working with this on your campuses, there are people who don't particularly like the idea of same sex marriage. And you've got to leave them that respect. You've got to let them be where they're at. You're not going to get them to change their mind. In my classes, I'm not trying to change minds, I'm trying to educate people. trying to help them understand. I play on a men's baseball team. You saw I played baseball, right? I still play baseball. I'm on a men's baseball team. I've been playing 15 years. And you have a ball, but what's up? Anyway. <laughs> I, you know, after the game, we would always be putting on our cleats and taking our stuff off. And the guys would be like, well, where's our next game? And one time, man, I'm going to give y'all a little advice on how to handle a situation like this, because you will see these situations. So at one point, there was somebody who said, hey, um, where's our next game, Eric? I said, looks like we're playing at Bobby Morris Field, off there, off Broadway. And these guys start growing in Seattle. You know? For y'all who don't know, Broadway, Seattle, Hub and Mecca, uh, you know, one of the highest populations of gay living couples. They live, and that's, that's their spot. That's where we those of us who are allies also had it. I said, man, what y'all worried about? Well, you know, they always looking at me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 I mean, we family now, right? Can I tell y'all what can I say? Like I really said it? <laughs> I looked down and I said, this is being an ally, but in my way. <laughs> Uh-huh. 
Okay, you're still going to go there. Okay, fine. We'll go with a whole other level version. Some of y'all don't sleep in PJs. <laughs>
psychologists work. Okay, well, I'm taking the analogy directly. McDonald's, you go up to it, you go and order something through a little machine. They, by the time you get up there, you have an exchange of money, economics, right? Money, and you get your food within about two minutes. We can't do that without each other, and that's just part of the system. You all are now part of leaders. You are part of our college. You are part of the change process. You are part of the system, but you can still be outside of it, and you can advocate for the things that students need. We need to hear from you. The administration, the advising teams, we need to hear from you. The leadership of the college relies upon your voices. So please, speak up. Tell us what you think. We need each other. There is no I in team. We always heard that, right? Be you. Be your individual self. Embrace your identity. But remember that you depend on other people. We need to support each other. So number one, support each other on your teams. And support the students that are coming up to your campus. Okay? So let's go to the last one, Jesus. We're running out of time now. Y'all, you gotta go for it sometimes. You just gotta go for it. Some things ain't gonna be safe. Taking the safe route is not always gonna work. Taking the safe route is not always gonna get you to the point where you can make a difference. Be unique, embrace your identity, and then go for it. You got a good idea, take it to the right people. You got something that you think will work for the campus community to embrace. And, and moreover, embrace the idea that social change can happen and you can make a difference. Y'all ever heard of the concept of the sphere of influence? The sphere of influence says that basically, Eric Davis started as a security officer on the graveyard ship at Seattle University. I had done it right for a woman. Now as a professional staff, 20 something years old, moved up to Seattle, and I'm on graveyard ship, 10 to 6, 10 p.m. I was doing the same basic speech. It was just three, four people on the, uh, uh, you know, who were on the streets at night. <laughs> Forever. My boss heard about this rap one-on-one -on -one thing, so he had me do training for the um, officers, the other officers. The residence life people heard about me doing this rap one-on-one -on -one thing and speaking about diversity, and they brought me in to do a presentation in the dorms. You get where we're going. Student activities folks heard about it. I did a speech for the campus. Next thing you know, I'm hired and I'm moving up. I'm having a master's degree. I go through this same presentation at a conference. It went best in the Northwest. They send me to the National Conference. I get that National Conference. They send me to the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity. And I go to the next. And here I am 20 something years later. Blessed to be here.
I want to close and then if there's time, we'll take a look. Uh, I'll take some questions or comments, but I want to end with this. When you get tight, y'all are, I mean, y'all can remember this, you are student leaders. Student leaders. It's fun. We're here at Cuffs. You're doing your thing, right? Enjoying this time, getting some education, getting some inspiration. But when we get back to school, when you talk about start something big, that means you also are going to be starting school and managing classrooms and classes. And you probably didn't want to have biology and chemistry in the same quarter that you started, but some of you got it, right? You didn't want to have count and physiology in this quarter, but darn it, you got it. So you got to do that and be part of the Associated Student Government Programming Board, University of Bowl. You got to do both, student leader. And as a student leader, sometimes you will get tired. Y'all remember how that feels to be tired? Bone tired? Come on now. Yeah. I get an amen? In your greatness, in the pursuit of greatness, you can also have a point where you need to find some grace. You need each other to support you, and you need to find grace. Because the sphere of influence is a direct tie to this concept of leaving a legacy. Again, not to be one to just bring up, and um, I'm not trying to equal trip here, I'm just trying to demonstrate to you all what it is that you do what you bring to the table and how much of a difference you can make. At Seattle University, after being a member of the Black Student Union at UCLA, I became the advisor for the Black Student Union at Seattle University. The Seattle University folks were guys, the black students were really frustrated because the Huyanani Club and the Aloha Samoa Club had all of these active club activities, man. They were they had the 40th annual Luau. The black students, you know? And the black students were like, we need to have something. And it was our sketching. So I said, well, we need to create. They wanted to do a black history month. I said, okay, let's do it. And they wanted to do something real basic. And I'm like, look, are y'all building something for this year, or do you want to build something that's going to last beyond you? Do you? Are you trying to get recognition for what you're doing now, or are you trying to leave a legacy? I encourage you and I ask you to please think about perhaps leaving a legacy. What can you do? to reach people who aren't going to be there when you're in school now, but that will be there in 10 years. You build that policy, program, activity, climate, and you're making a difference that lives beyond you. Michael Fronte is going to give me my last verse here, and then I'm going to officially close. But he has a song that pretty much in my when I feel tired, you know, the song starts out like, why must I feel like this today? You know, there's sometimes that the, the skies look gray and it doesn't feel like you've got the energy to do what you need to do. And he says what you need to do is pray for grace. Ask for some support from people around you, not just pray like to your higher power if you believe, but to pray to, to, to go to others. What if, what if God was actually a reflection of who we are and the energy we put out? What if it was the smile you put on your face when somebody comes to walk past you? What if that was what God was about? What if that's where that spirit of love that you emit is all, that's what it's all about? Pray for grace means that you're going out to try to find yourself and find the energy to keep going. And I'm going to give you the first verse that we're going to close. I take a moment to myself so I can feel myself, heal myself, and be real myself. Life's addictions and afflictions cause abrasion from the friction. Sometimes it's easier to live in fiction. I can run, but I can't hide from the pains that reside down deep inside. There is no pill that can be swallowed. There is no guru that can be followed. There's no escaping from my own history, those that I hurt and those that
was that hurt me. I was dead for a million years before I was born, and I'll be dead for a million more after I'm gone. So I live to give something that can live on, like the way you want a song when the music's gone, like the warmth of the sand when the sun goes down, and I'm sitting with myself, nobody else is around. Thank you. 